This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. Well, it was another misty, cloudy morning in St. Louis, but take a look at this. Here's a live look at Interstate 55 in Arnold, where those clouds are clearing off. We haven't seen the sun in more than a week. Thanks for joining us at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. A week ago, we were in the grip of an ice storm. Today, we could hit 50 degrees, and hopefully, we'll all see the sun. Let's get to meteorologist Gary Frank. He's in for Jim Castillo with the Weather First forecast. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, overall, it's nice to see the sunshine, despite where you are, depending on where you are, still a little bit of fog outside. Nice to see the evidence that it is coming out, moving pretty smoothly. Uh, there still is some pretty dense fog in Pittsfield, even St. Charles, but uh, that's actually improved over the last 30 minutes. It was at about a quarter of a mile visibility. Uh, so things are improving, even in Chesterfield, where it was pretty foggy for a while. Overall, you'll see most of the cloud cover and fog still hanging in the Metro East. East. Uh, Missouri side, not quite as foggy. It's been sunny, and that's why it's starting to warm up from west to east a little bit more, but you still can only see half the arch at this point. Uh, temperatures holding steady, though. 44 degrees, so evidence that despite some fog, we've warmed up pretty quickly and will do so with a south breeze at 5 miles an hour. So as that wind picks up the next few hours, I think we'll have no problem getting into the low 50s. More sunshine, but we do have more clouds on the way, at least for a brief period. We'll talk about a slight chance for rain and temperatures even warmer than this in the next few days. Wow, that sounds great. Thank you, Gary. Lambert Airport could see a big economic boost in the next eight years. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay is at the airport to explain details of a new study and why a new single terminal could play a major factor. Hours ago, our newsroom received this study from Greater St. Louis. It basically broke down the economic impact between 2019 to what it could be in 2032 with this consolidation project. Here are the key takeaways from the study. According to Greater St. Louis, with the new single terminal, it's expected to bring in nearly $5 billion more billion and 30,000 additional jobs by 2032. On top of that, 80% of similarly sized metros are investing in new airports like this. And good news for everyone at home, no state or local taxpayer dollars will be used for the new single terminal project. That $2.8 billion project would consolidate its two terminals into one. Airport officials began negotiations for this new terminal back in May and previously said it would take two years. But according to our partners at the St. Louis Business Journal, they hope to reach an agreement with the airlines during summer of 2024. Now, many of you at home are probably wondering how this will impact you as a traveler. The study breaks down a lot of benefits that it says this will have for the traveler. So things like more gates and more concessions will be added, more domestic and international routes to and from St. Louis Lambert International Airport, and even a larger parking garage, which would double and triple the amount of spots here. At Lambert, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Metrolink is running on schedule after an incident forced it to shut down. This was the scene overnight near the Del Mar station. We only know the incident happened between the Wellston and Forest Park to Bolivar stations a little before midnight. A spokesperson with Metro says the train hit someone trespassing near the right of way. No word on that person's condition. A nail salon in Pacific remains closed today. On Saturday, a car slammed into the building on East Osage Street. Security footage shows the moment a woman drove in reverse right through the salon's front window. The Missouri Highway Patrol says the crash killed 61-year-old Jill Goddard and injured two other people. So far, no one has been charged. Police in St. Louis investigating a number of weekend crimes. Shootings left six people dead. The first happened Saturday when officers found a shooting victim on 7th Street. Then a man was found dead on the Eads Bridge in an apparent drive-by shooting yesterday morning. Homicide detectives are also investigating four other deadly incidents that happened later in the day. An update now on a homicide in Iron County. The Mineral Area Major Case Squad has arrested David Wayne Sharp. He's accused of killing his brother, 65-year-old Durrell Sharp. The incident happened in the town of Middlebrook on Thursday night. Officers found David Sharp in a motel in Louisville. We're following a developing story in the Middle East. Three American soldiers are dead after a drone attack on a U.S. base in Jordan. The Pentagon says Iranian MAC militant groups are to blame. As NBC's Bree Jackson reports, there's new concern this could draw the U.S. into wider conflict. Three American soldiers killed and at least two dozen injured in a drone strike in Jordan. President Biden calling for a moment of silence during a campaign stop in South Carolina. We lost three brave soldiers in an attack on our base. 
While the facts are still being gathered, in a statement, the president says the attacks were carried out by radical Iran-backed militia groups operating in Syria and Iraq. Lawmakers agree. It's clear, according to what the White House is telling us, that this um, was instigated by radical um, extremists um, funded by Iran. This attack marks the first time U.S. service members in the Middle East were killed in the months of strikes since the Israel-Hamas war began and is seen as a dangerous escalation. These are drones that are packed with explosives and then detonate upon impact. But to have that type of the number of casualties suggests that it was a fairly sizable one. The White House says the U.S. will hold those responsible to account at a time and in a manner of our choosing. There's also pressure on the administration to take decisive action against Iran for backing the militia behind the deadly drone strike. I think the Biden administration now is going to have to rethink the general strategy. Deterrence is not working. President Biden vows to take action. He said we'll respond. Uh, we we, uh, we absolutely will. We'll do it at a time and in a manner of our choosing. A sentiment echoed by defense officials who say attacks on American forces will not be tolerated. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. And new details have just been reported. U.S. troops may have confused the drone used in the attack with an American drone that was returning to the base at the same time. The Associated Press reports, as a result, their U.S. officials made no effort to shoot down the enemy drone. Tomorrow, the Illinois State Board of Elections is expected to consider recommending that Donald Trump be removed from the state's primary ballot. A group of citizens says he engaged in insurrection in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. They cite provisions of the 14th Amendment barring people who engaged in insurrection from holding public office. The U.S. Supreme Court will hear arguments on a similar proposal in Colorado. Still ahead, vandalizing a work of art. Why a group of protesters tossed soup at the Mona Lisa. And the Chiefs going back to the Super Bowl. A look at who they'll play and why it'll feel familiar.